Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Angry Astronaut Double Shot of Content, Double Shot of Bulletins for you today. So first of all, here in Cornwall, just a quick catch up to having to stay even longer than I anticipated. A few complications having arisen simply because of trying to coordinate everybody involved between the spaceport and Virgin Orbit. Virgin Orbit had made commitments to their staff here that they could go home for Thanksgiving. They honored those commitments, and I admire them for that, but only now has everybody pretty much filtered back to the spaceport. That being the case, now they need to coordinate the launch, and they need to get this done before Christmas, because even though, theoretically, some of the folks here in Britain might be willing to work through Christmas. They also need to coordinate this launch with the Spanish and Portuguese authorities um, because they are interdicting their flight paths over the Atlantic in order to carry out this launch, and there's no way in hell those people are going to work through Christmas. So now they are very rushed to get, to get all of this taken care of within the next two weeks at most. And once again, thanks so much for all your support because it's been really, really draining uh, to stay here for the amount of time that I have, and it wouldn't have happened without your help. And meanwhile, Orion just sends back one incredible image after another, uh, just images of our planet that no human being has ever seen, um, especially this moment of uh, the moon eclipsing the Earth. Um, that was a unique view, and again, one that no human eye has ever witnessed. Amazing things indeed coming to us from Orion, but is it really accomplishing everything that it needs to do, especially when it comes to radiation? And also, so do we know all everything that's being tested? Is all of that going well? Well, the radiation side, as you're going to see, is a bit problematic. And also, interestingly enough, there is a NASA version of Alexa on board this ship. Hey, Alexa, take me to the moon, play me some Mozart and uh, uh, Solar Storm? What Solar Storm? So it's easy to be a little disappointed about Artemis and Orion simply because it looks like a giant space capsule from the Apollo era, and as a matter of fact, it's even using some of the same engines that Apollo used. However, as far as hardware and software is concerned, on board the Orion capsule, things are very different. And the biggest thing, the most cutting edge piece of technology, in my opinion, is the Callisto crew interface system. And this isn't some sort of Alexa knockoff. As a matter of fact, Amazon actually was involved in the creation of this interface system along with Cisco and Lockheed Martin. And what it's supposed to do is to demonstrate how voice technology, AI, and portable tablet-based video conferencing can help improve efficiency and situational awareness for those on board the spacecraft, providing access to real-time mission information and a virtual connection to people and information information back on Earth, and the goal is to explore how these commercial technologies may support astronauts on future deep space missions to the moon and beyond. So to put it simply, Alexa's custom-designed hardware and software has been integrated into the hardware designed by Lockheed Martin, and it's able to access real-time telemetry data and then respond to thousands of mission-specific questions on board Orion, like Alexa, how fast is Orion traveling? Or Alexa, what's the temperature in the cabin? And even control connected devices on board the spacecraft. So how is NASA using this system, given the fact that there are no crew members on board Orion right now? Well, it's because they have virtual crew members at the Mission Control Center at the Johnson Space Center who are asking questions about the status of Orion and also are testing its ability to control connected devices on board the spacecraft. And interactions are transmitted to Orion and then back again using NASA's deep space network. So really, for all practical purposes, it's just like like having astronauts on board the spacecraft interacting with Callisto. Callisto also has a modified version of Cisco's WebEx video conferencing system that allows video collaboration in deep space. Astronauts on long missions to the moon and beyond can have on-demand video conversations with loved ones, as well as problem solving with modern collaboration tools, such as whiteboarding with crew and command centers, 
over a quarter of a million miles away. But of course, here's the problem. All of that is going to be next to useless as far as going to Mars is concerned, given the light travel time between Earth and Mars. Nevertheless, as far as Artemis is concerned and going to the moon, this is a very intriguing system that may greatly improve astronaut efficiency, assuming that it works properly. However, it may not work so properly if exposed to a great deal of solar radiation and cosmic rays, and this is something that's become a bit problematic because of the short duration of this mission. Unfortunately, Orion has not been subjected to any kind of significant solar flares or any other kind of charged particle event, and this is unfortunate because the radiation vest that one of the moonikins, as they are called, yes, I've been saying mannequins incorrectly in the past, but in any event, one of the Munikins was equipped with one of these vests and one was not, in the hopes that they would be subjected to some kind of major solar event to determine what sort of damage would actually affect human tissue and how much would these vests provide realistic protection. That being the case, though, we really haven't gathered enough data to determine what might happen in a worst-case scenario, and it's not just human health that's at stake here. In addition to that, radiation can cause disruptions to critical computers, avionics, and other equipment. So, of course, NASA does have a strategy to protect astronauts in the event of a major solar storm. However, they're really engaging in old-school methods here. Once the radiation alarm sounds, the NASA astronauts have one hour to build a radiation shelter out of the supplies, food and water, and other storage bags on board in order to put as much mass between themselves and the radiation. They'll also be using it in combination with Orion seats to strategically place denser bags in areas of the vehicle with less radiation protecting material. For example, the bottom of Orion, where the heat shield and service module are attached will provide more shielding than other areas and stowage bags can be used for parts of the spacecraft's interior with less shielding. So kind of a primitive way of building a radiation shield. Just basically pile up all of your supplies and hope that that stops the radiation. I really hope they come up with more comprehensive plans than this in the future and of course there's no way that they can test this scenario because because there are no astronauts on board Orion on this particular trip. So when it comes right down to it, the problems that NASA experienced when trying to launch SLS on the first couple of attempts have actually led to having a less comprehensive period to test the spacecraft. Now, I'm not blaming NASA for when they decided to launch, nor really am I blaming NASA for all the problems they've had up to this point, because the vast majority of them were caused by the launch tower, which, yeah, NASA did contract, but really it was the contract contractors themselves that mucked that up as bad as they did. That being the case, though, there are probably still a number of unanswered questions that are going to be left to the first astronauts to travel to the moon in over half a century when Artemis II flies, hopefully sometime in early 2024. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and keep in mind that I have just passed 90,000 subscribers and already have over 350 new subscribers since we hit that mark. Thank you very much. Please tell your friends, your family members to subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.